On the clearest of nights, when the winds of the Ethereum were calm and peaceful. Ethereum, big word. Let's try this again. Kids, we'll find this video boring. It has big words. I have a whole thing about big words. So kids, consider this not directed towards you. Anyone 12 or younger wasn't born until five years after this movie came out. So there. Anyway, Ethereum, good for not playing it coy. It's not space as we know it, it's the Ethereum. It has wind and it can be calm. You watch this movie enough, you start seeing skulls in the clouds. First great detail you probably all notice about this movie is the combination of 3D digital animation and 2D hand-drawn cell animation. Yep, I'm gonna give wins to sci-fi tech because holographic projection books are sweet. And more importantly, there's an implication that this universe's reliance on solar energy has made their technological advancements happen faster than ours, especially if this is supposed to be like 18th century-ish or 10 million years in the future, depending on who you talk to. Ha, the asteroid rings make an X, like X marks the spot on the planet, in the system. Well, it was at least after Lilo and Stitch came out. Made one spirit soar. Sick animated match cut, I'll take it. But speaking of solar power, I like that they don't imply it just erases poverty. Jim's solar surfer is clearly made by him, but the sail seems like trash pieces he's been stitching together over the years. This sequence is why the 10 people who saw Treasure Planet in theaters did so, and it doesn't disappoint. And again, the combination of 3D and 2D works exquisitely to give you a rush of excitement, but also remind you of Disney's past. Of course, you're gonna get pulled over for that sick method. That's right, I played Cool Borders too. And this like hybrid steampunk aesthetic, deliberately 70% 18th century realism mixed with 30% sci-fi. My Alponian chowder with the extra solaris seed. <laughs> Alponian. I'm sure that'll be the last pun. Deplorable, ah, adorable. Character written for David Hyde Pierce is Niles Crane Dog. Jennifer Goodwin is a bunny. David Hyde Pierce is an alien dog. Raising a felon like felon, fellow, fellow. We see his type all the time, man. Wrong choices, said Enders, losers. So are the programmers jerks or is Treasure Planet saying that AI will be just as condescending as humans? It's gonna be worse, isn't it? Ever since his father left. So as a dad of a tiny guy that is just about as happy as this little guy most of the time, that one hits home. It's a divergence from the books since Jim's dad is around for his childhood and it sets up Jim's arc in this story perfectly. Still, it crushes my soul to see him go from this to this because his dad bailed, leaving him feeling like he has no future. Yeah, what future? Ah, uh, the Jordan Catalano, the Jack Dawson, or even the Nick Carter. Seems safe to assume that's the last thing that will date this movie. Those gears and gyros clicking and whirling like the devil himself. So then not the robot devil? Ah. Obviously she's not changing the weather since you can still hear the rain falling, but what a great example of real world advancement. Not life altering, but convenience and comfort amenities become more ubiquitous in a post energy scarcity civilization. A smiling, happy little boy holding a new pet and begging me to let him keep it. Fulfilling your mother's dreams. James Pleiades Hawkins! No one seems to agree on the etymology of Pleiades, but it may come from the Greek plane, which means to sail. So let's go with that one. I'm sure the writers did. Look at those people's constrict in response to Billy Bones' death. They do not cheat here. That is Silver, and I think that's the separate head body guy, and that's the spider crab guy's group. I just spoke with the constabulary. Between PhD dog professors, a borderline genius captain, and articulate pirates, Treasure Planet has more than its share of $10 words or outdated seafaring parlance, and we're gonna start a second counter that will even give you the definition as a mini cinema wins word of the week that probably contains more words than the rest of the year previously. Like a pirate's. Even the diagram of the planet shows that it's made of metal and has a core important enough to be on the map. And we know it's an actual representation since Montressor looks like a normal organic planet. Would hold an eternal place atop the pantheon of explorers. Things you take for granted in modern animated movies, but you might notice the slight brightness variation in the room that is being created by the flickering fire. Go Delbert, go Delbert. Anachronism aside, David Hyde Pierce really kills this role. There are plenty of stereotypes he could have filled, but they went with a character unique to David Hyde Pierce. I genuinely didn't know what his deal was on my first watch and wouldn't have been surprised if he betrayed Jim for the treasure by the end. Okay, only around this scene and barely, but still. Able to experience. <laughs> I really, 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 really want to go. And it's the right thing. Honestly, that's pretty much when I knew he was a good one. That brief moment where you can see the stars through the crescent and you think, well, somebody doesn't understand how moon phases work. Oh, it was an um actually trap. And this is a seriously impressive digital model for 2002. Second birth on your right! 
You can't miss it. Voice cameos from the directors Musker and Clements. The RLS Legacy. Robert Louis Stevenson Legacy. The author of Treasure Island has a legacy after all. Dr. Doppler, I presume. Hello? Can you hear me? Emma Thompson is always a win. I know, I did Harry Potter and Trelawney absolutely fits the criteria. I think Helena Bonham Carter just overshadowed her in my brain. And since Treasure Island also has a Trelawney, I think it all worked out in the end. She commands every scene she's in, thanks in large part to her animators, but her voice always so quick and as if she doesn't need anyone else in the room to do a scene. You've met my first officer, Mr. Arrow. Sterling, tough, dependable, honest, brave and true. Compliments. Oh, shut up, Arrow, you know I don't mean a word of it. And honesty. Demonstrates a level of ineptitude that borders on the imbecilic. <laughs> Not a huge word, but man do I love the way she says imbecilic. This is how I picture the Dowager Countess in her younger years. Oh, I said something rather good this morning before coffee. A ludicrous parcel of driveling galoots. I mean, let's go with galoots on that one. Fun detail, rather than create a bunch of extra work for the digital artists, they decided to set this scene up so that they were shooting directly into the light source, the one from the windows behind them all. That way, all they had to do was use overspill, making the edges of the characters a little blurry and brightened up. Mr. Arrow, please escort these two neophytes down to the galley straight- That woman! That feline! See, I get a more foxy, squirrely vibe, but I guess- Oh, I get it. He's a dog, she's a cat. All right, yeah. Oh yeah, also this makes more sense now. Zip your howling screamer. Now we're hitting one of the main reasons for the hand-drawn and digital combination. Bet you can't guess which parts of silver are which. But it all blends together without sacrificing quality in either. Oh, but, but, no, you but, can't. I mean, the largest... Commonality. We are all clear, Captain! Particular alien species are better suited to particular jobs. Lots of eyes? Look out. <laughs> when the sun hits the sail, it acts like it's filled with air since solar power is its energy source. And going along with that, since Treasure Planet plays it loosey-goosey with the vacuum of space, they're able to truly embrace the nautical tone while offering futuristic visuals and still toying with the idea of gravity and solar power. This may be a Blu-ray problem that widens the gap between the CGI and the hand-drawn 2D, but the space whales are one of the times that you might become aware of the different styles. But space whales? <laughs> yeah. Aimlessly footling about it. A momentary aberration, Captain. Why, you impudent little cabin boy. <laughs> Saving that impudent little... His eyes are in his mouth. They don't exactly keep it a secret that Silver is with the pirates, but before the big reveal, it's hinted with that red laser eye warnings group. Yep, just the haircut. John Resnick and the Goo Goo Dolls are still touring after all. More importantly, a learning the ship while getting to know your new father figure montage is the fastest way to get covered in God knows what kind of radiation coated cancer causing comet dust. There are lots of reasons that telling the Treasure Island story in space is fun, but the visuals of casual space exploration are top of the list. <laughs> are you having a little trouble there? Oh, get away from me. And overall, they do a decent job of drawing these two together in a short period of time. Bet you didn't even know John Resnick was planting ideas in your brain. Eh, yeah, you probably did. Can you help me be a man? Giant space rocks are a decent reason to have cannons on ships. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Saving that father figure who definitely won't betray you pretty soon. Lost these waves, this <laughs> solar waves, solar wind, I'm with you. Usedly erratic! That'll teach you to wear that red shirt trekking in space, no less. Well, I have a lot of help to offer anatomically, I mean, mnemonically, as astronomically. Flirting? You got the makings of greatness in you. Sometimes the most helpful and meaningful things come from unlikely places, and that's... That's like legitimate encouragement and words every young person should hear. <sighs> I hope I'm there, catching some of the light coming off you that day. Also hugging. The filmmakers established up front that green equals treasure planet, as in the actual planet. This first person shot of the galley from Jim's point of view has been color graded to make the lighting look green. Even behind silver, you can see the color shifting, so we know they're getting close. But since they'd already shot the mutiny with an orange glow, they needed to slowly fade back to those warmer tones for continuity. It's incredible the things they considered when making this film. I don't think we give Scroop enough credit since he is using the same device, a uh, perp. Real inventive name, by the way. It would be like naming an orange fruit and oh. But he uses the same method to threaten Silver as Silver used to threaten him. Which, now that I think about it, Jim picked one up when he was trying to trick Silver a few minutes ago. Speaking of aliens suited to specific jobs, I have a feeling Goro was only hired for one reason. Did you actually aim for that? You know, actually, I did. Deliberate anti-stormtrooper aim? Gossamer landings? 
Now that we're on Treasure Planet, almost everything has a green hue, and if you're paying attention, you'll notice that much of the vegetation at least looks like what we know as fungi, mold spores, and the type of stuff that would grow around a metal structure if left alone. And then you start to look closer, and you notice that the root Jim slides down could definitely be a metal tube of some kind, and you'll even see metal peering through the overgrowth, and touches of it everywhere. Just some building or integral part of the planet and entrance to the core. After a hundred years, you got a little nuts! Martin Short is a funny guy, so throwing him under Robin Williams' shadow was a weird choice. He does have his moments, though. Hey, hey. And you are? Where are you gonna... Centroid! Centroid! Centroid of the mechanism! And you have to stop touching me. Because making fully digital characters interact with hand-drawn characters is a lot of work, even if they nail it. Just a little palaver. Thank you, we don't drink, and, uh, and uh, we're not a couple. That's what you said about Daphne. To be fair, it's a love story to compete with Niles and Daphne. Feel like that joke is gonna lead to a hundred comments about how it was actually toxic and now I'm a terrible person. So forget it. Pestilential. You have wonderful eyes. More flirting. Well, you gotta help her. Dang it, Jim, I'm an astronomer, not a doctor. But he does like bones, right, dog? Right? McCoy? Anyone? Woof. See what I mean? Jimmy has this knowledge of things. It took me a second to realize they didn't cut out a bunch of relationship building. Ben sees Jim as his savior and new best friend because he's the first person he's seen in a hundred years. It's me and my best buddy out. If we stay here. We're dead. We're dead. We're dead. We're dead. I probably don't sing morph sprays enough because as evidenced here, he's just a pure being feeding off of other people's energy. Pretty clear he doesn't know what's actually happening between Jim and Silver. Also, the repeating is a nice nod to Long John Silver's Barrett, really showing off the unique 2D and 3D style combinations again. <laughs> and Morph is showing himself to be a Three Stooges fan. Ah, so Dream Level 2 with the rotating hallways was not the first time Arthur had been in a low gravity fight. Also, that's some pretty terrifying comeuppance, but poetic after what Scroop did to Mr. Arrow. I see nothing. One great big stinking crank of nothing! Lots of eyes, lookout guy is a little obsessed with his job. I love the little hint that this entire planet is just one big machine for fast travel around the universe, like something that would have been built by the Forerunners. There's this in-depth lore just looming under the surface. Also, Cameron's entire inspiration for Pandora. We are going to need a bigger boat! And that's some bad hat Harry. Flint ship even had creepy legs for grabbing stuff. Pirates, am I right? Feel like such a useless weakling. Silver linings? Some might say your emotions make you weak. I'd say they make you strong. Choosing life and a friend over treasure might seem like it shouldn't be the hardest decision in the world, but you give up a few things, chasing a dream. The Navy claptrap. <laughs> Helpfulness. You might notice at this point that the dark shadows around Jim's eyes are finally gone now that he's stepping up and taking control of the situation. They've been there all movie, adding to the sullen teenager thing he's got going. Huh. As the ship comes about, the sails actually move into position the way they would on an in-real-life ship. A little callback to all his practice in the construction yard. Lacking any sick grabs would have been cool. <laughs> That's like anti-stormtrooper finger aim? I feel like the moral of the story here is to break the rules because you never know when it might come in handy. Also, does this count as seeing light come off him? Hugging with a touch of implied interspecies love. Dog on cat, goat on chicken, chicken on goat, couple of chickens do- Big guy, cause I gotta hug ya! <laughs> More hugging. I sort of assume it's a made-up knot, but it definitely looks like a one-tug on tire. Being in a cage, did it break his heart? Parrots don't go to prison, John. I would have taken you up on that offer in a second. Which is the completion of Jim's arc, making his own path. All he wanted was for his dad to notice him, to take him, to not leave him. Silver gave him a lot of that. But in the end, Jim learns he doesn't need what he wanted so badly. Even more hugging, and James Newton Howard's score here has an enchanting swell to it. As for your dear mother. Generosity? Uh, it's basically just righting a wrong. But hey, parting with your lifelong quest means something. And everybody's found gainful employment. Now that Jim is in his dress whites, it makes it very obvious that he starts the film in all black, sheds some layers down to a muted brown slash gray on the ship, and then ends in this victorious white. <laughs> they clearly asked Morph to keep an eye on the babies. <sighs> Ben sort of sucks at the robot. Turns out Silver was a being of pure energy that can take any form you need to teach a lesson as long as John Resnick is singing in the background. And look, it's a, it's a good song. They're both good songs. Data doesn't mean that they're both not worth a win.
I haven't done the math, mostly because YouTube's new comment section is crashy and would only let me go to a certain number of pages while searching for the Treasure Planet request, but it's definitely top 10, probably top 5 requested movies on this channel. I got up to about 1300 instances before it crashed last time. In 2002, I wasn't the biggest Disney fan, so this one passed me by and I didn't see it for the first time until September of this year. I only vaguely remembered the book, or cliff notes, and only knew it was pirates in space, but not really space pirates. But before I continue with what I loved, there was one thing that gnawed at me after my first viewing to the point that I was nervous about making this video. Look, this movie is fun and exciting, and after brushing up, it's pretty faithful to Treasure Island while adding a fun new spin to the setting. But I, at least originally, felt like this movie comes dangerously close to excusing Silver's actions, which would be fine if it weren't for being a kid's movie. Certain things just muddle the message a little. A kid might walk away thinking that if an adult treats you like Silver, it's okay because he never did anything too bad. He only threatened to kill Jim multiple times. And then Jim lets him go in the end, and there's like this, well, let's let bygones be bygones tone to it all. Jim is around 14, 15 years old, a minor in most places, so any authority figure, even worse, a father figure manipulating or maybe just attempting to manipulate him is just a little icky for me. It's not the end of the world, it doesn't ruin the movie, I don't think a movie's lesson needs to fit neatly in a box. Life is messy, people are complex. And it would be unfair to pretend like Jim is passive and not generally making his own informed decisions. 15 is the edge of adulthood and this movie is about Jim's journey to adulthood. And after 3 or 4 watches through, I felt less icky about the relationship. Relationship. Not least of all because early movie Jim would have thought Silver was the coolest cat and joined his life of high seas space crime, but through his time with him, learning discipline and what it is to be a man, he made his own choice and took a more honorable path. So that's more a caveat to say that as an adult, I really enjoy the character of Silver. I enjoy that the main antagonist of the film bounces back and forth between role model and baddie and has as big an arc as Jim does. Stories where characters aren't just this side of one dimensional can be hard to come by in animation. Disney especially acts like it's written in the contracts of the movies they make that bad guys should announce themselves so there's no confusion. Silver does actually announce himself. It's never a huge secret, but knowing he is at the beginning doesn't change the journey we see him go on with Jim. And I have to give them credit for moments that could have gone too far, they pulled it back and gave Silver a pained look. Obviously, Jim and Silver's relationship is crucial to the film, and they do a lot with a little time. You're going to rattle the stars, you are. There is nothing like the Goo Goo Dolls to bring two people together. But it shouldn't be much of a surprise coming from Ron Clements and John Musker, two guys that have been begging to make this movie since the 80s. They kept getting pushed off with The Little Mermaid, and then Aladdin, and then Hercules. And just in case you think they lost their chops, they also directed Moana. But this was such a passion project for them, it comes through in the relationships as well as the visuals. I talked about the digital and hand-drawn combination they created with this movie, but like with Silver, it was often in the same scene with layers of both. They used a technique called Deep Canvas, where a basic 3 3D model is created and then artists paint it digitally rather than applying textures. So the model updates as the camera moves around within the space, applying the same 2D look to a 3D environment. And this isn't about diminishing how modern animation works. Digital artists aren't just clicking a button, it's still very laborious. But the way they worked around the limitations of the time to combine these two styles is a fun part of animation's history. And it's on full display in Treasure Planet. This movie didn't fail because it wasn't well received, it failed because Disney barely pushed it and the marketing campaigns not only spoiled that Silver was the bad guy, it also really leaned into Ben and sold it as a very different movie. You could make a case that it was a deliberate move. They could probably remake it now and it would do considerably better. Personally, I wouldn't mind a fully updated sci-fi version where they let the swashbuckling stuff go, but I won't hold my breath. We'll always have this one. So this is gonna close out the year. I'm gonna take some time off a few weeks, maybe in January, just like I did last year, to regroup, clean my desk, and give my publish finger a break. I'll probably have a few blocked videos going back up, and hopefully Julia and I will get out to see some movies so I can do a 60 second review here and there. Thank you for an amazing year, you have all made this possible for me, and I, I couldn't be more thankful. Genuinely, the positive feedback I get from so many of you, it really keeps me going. So, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, and Merry Christmas. Just a lifelong obsession, Jim. I'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs>